I wasn't very happy yesterday because the results of my code suggested that our hypothesis was wrong and I didn't really have results to present for my senior thesis. After my advisor looked at, uh, looked at my results a little bit longer, he realized that it seemed like my answers deviated from experimentally accepted ones at large angles. To clarify, I was making calculations on the differential cross sections as a function of the scattering angle. The equation for this is in terms of Legendre polynomials, and that is the only term in the entire equation that depends on the angle, so naturally my professor thought that the problem lied within that term. But you see, he underestimated my ability to mess up other terms. As you might be able to tell based off of the tone of my voice, I fixed my code and I'm getting the right answer now. How many times have I fixed my code? Hopefully this is the last time, but let me show you exactly what happened. Little disclaimer, I'm gonna show you a little bit of math. All you need to know is either Euler's identity or understand what a Taylor series is and you're good to go. If you don't really even know that, that's fine. Here's pretty pictures of math. All right, so this is the equation for a differential cross section as a function of the scattering angle. And what we can see here is that the only term where the theta appears is in this P sub L of cosine theta. Uh, we also have this e to the i delta sub L. So this is, delta sub L is the phase shift of the wave function. And one thing to keep in mind is that you can always expand an exponential to an imaginary power by using Euler's identity. So e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. You can derive this just by using a Taylor series on uh, cosine of theta and sine theta, putting some stuff together and multiplying some stuff by i. Now, when you expand that through that identity, what you get is this equation. And this is a bit longer, a little bit more tedious to write out, but what there isn't in this equation is e to the i delta l, and that's because you substitute in Euler's identity. Now the problem is that I tried to be clever. I didn't feel like writing that expanded form in my code. I wanted to keep it as compressed as possible. What I did was I acknowledged the fact that that differential cross section is an observable. And in being an observable, that means that when you add all that stuff up, that's gonna give you a real number at the end. It's not gonna be imaginary, which is right. So when I wrote the code in that compressed form with the e to the i delta l, what I wrote in the code was just focus on the real part of this. The mistake in this is that that whole quantity is squared, which means that a lot of the imaginary stuff becomes real at the end, and I was forcing it to only look at the real part before squaring it, and I was getting rid of a lot of that information that contributes to calculating that differential cross-section. So I rewrote the code in the expanded form and I finally started getting my sensible results. So in the end, I learned that I'm not smart enough to be lazy. And that makes me angry. Now, I sent my new results to my professor and he says this looks much better and he's gonna add more comments on it throughout the day. So I'm just glad that this means that I might not have to go to ODU on Saturday to write my thesis with him and I can start taking care of it now. Um, so I'm on the right track. I saw that a lot of you actually did comment what classes you're taking next semester in the last video. So out of those classes, if you did comment, which ones are you the most excited for? And if you didn't comment in the last video, let me know what you're taking next semester and what you're most excited for. And I'll see you guys there.